death camp site at Helmo was actually the first death camp that opened in Poland, and that opened on December 8, 1941. People were removed from here and murdered and buried where you'll see later, later today. This is a children's memorial and has, is linked to a site in what used to be Czechoslovakia. In the spring of 1942, one of the highest ranking Nazi officials, Reinhard Heydrich, was assassinated in Prague by Czech patriots that had been parachuted into the country with the express purpose of killing him. He was among the most feared Nazi officials by the British, and he was killed. He died of his wounds. And in retaliation for his death, the Nazis raised several Czech communities from the face of the earth, one of which, Nietzsche, was filmed, and most of the children, if they didn't look German, were deported here to the Wuch ghetto, 83 of them. All the men, women, anybody that was asleep in that village that morning was killed or deported back to Germany and ultimately killed. The 83 children were deported here and then they were taken to Helmno and gassed at, uh, at Helmno. If you Google, we, will, we, we did this kind of a tour in January uh, to the Czech Republic and to Austria. If you Google Midice, L-I-D-I-C-E, you'll see at that site what is the largest uh, stone memorial sculpture in the world to children. The 83 children were memorialized by a Czech sculptor. When she died, other sculptors from around the world helped finish that memorial. So in the Czech Republic, there are the 83 life-size figures of the children that were deported here and murdered near here. So this is part of that. This is all there is here uh, in Wuch on the side of the ghetto. and outdoor components beyond the building. And to the left of the building, you can't see it, is a railway that tracks and a couple of train cars.
say you won't see any grave site like this anywhere else in Poland. You don't see them as clearly as you will here on a day like today. The top counts about 360,000. Somewhere between 150 and 360. Clearly it was several hundred thousand people. to the spring of 45. Why did it shut down for that period of time? They ran out of people that they were going to kill. And then it opened up again when they tried to exhume the bodies and burn them and kill more people. But the Russians came too quickly and they didn't get to finish what they wanted. But remember, when the war ended and the trials took place in Nuremberg, what you're seeing on this trip, no Americans ever saw. American servicemen were only familiar with camps that they liberated in Western Europe, Germany, Austria, Central Europe. They were terrible places of immense suffering where thousands and thousands of people died, but they weren't death factories like these places. The Americans and Western allies had no clue, no clue about Helmno or Auschwitz. Americans never saw Stutthof or Treblinka or anywhere else you're going to see. We had no clue. Not in 1945 we didn't. Only the Russians found these places. And even they didn't really have a clue as to all that they had found. They got a sense of it when they found Majdanek. You'll see that on Christmas Day. They found that intact. been held in the basement in Helmno and could hear the screams of victims as they were gassed. He gave a testimony in 1945, and this is a quote from his testimony. Many signatures appeared on the basement wall, among others the signature of Mr. Kaliski from the town called Davy. There was also a significant line in Yiddish, he who comes does not walk away alive. We had no illusions about our fate. We're here today to remember those who suffered the atrocities of the, Kelm of the Helmo extermination camp, those who died and those who suffered but survived. Let us be thankful for even the smallest freedoms in our lives, including the air we breathe. When we light the candle, we're all going to take a breath of fresh air and let it out together as we light it. Deep breath. So I want to share the story of uh, Mr. Podshelnik's uh, escape. Michael Podshelnik managed to escape while on a truck taking him and other prisoners into the woods. He and another victim, Weiner from Izbika, had previously discussed escaping through one of the bus windows that could be lowered, but that day he was separated and escorted in a truck while his friend Weiner was still on the bus, so he decided to still try alone. 
He asked the escorting SS man for a cigarette while on the truck, and when he gave him one, the other prisoners crowded that guard. He then cut the tarp quickly with a knife he had and jumped out of the truck and ran toward the woods. Shots were fired, but missed him. He later met back with his friend and Grabal, who had also escaped. But Podshelvnik's wife and his seven-year-old boy and his four-year-old girl did not survive. We would like to conclude with a quote from a William Shakespeare play, The Merchant of Venice, that was written in the 16th century. He hath disgraced me and scorned my nation. And what's his reason? I am a Jew. Hath not a Jew eyes? Hath not a Jew hands, organs, dimensions, senses, affections, passions, fed with the same food, hurt with the same weapons, subject to the same diseases, healed by the same means, warmed and cooled by the same winter and summer as a Christian is? If you prick us, do we not bleed? If you tickle us, do we not laugh? If you poison us, do we not die?